Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Autoize and welcome back to From the Depths Beta Test where we've got a lovely update waiting for us Beta Test 3.3.1 aka the Diplomacy Update So there's a number of very uh, big, important and excellent changes uh, in this update to FTD but the big one, hence the title, is the long-awaited addition of diplomacy to the campaign. So, what we're looking at right now is an old campaign save I happen to have, where I've got a, um, a rather fun wooden canoe just gamboling around in the waves. And this is what we are at right now. So, Deacon's Christmas. Flipping. So, we're playing at half speed right now, and you'll see that up here we have... A, about 10 seconds until the next council meeting. What on earth does that mean? This is a timed event that happens every so often in the campaign now that allows you to choose basically who you're going to be fight, who you're going to be at war with, who you're going to be at peace with, who to gang up on, or you can just say to, you know, declare war on absolutely everybody. And here it is. I could not have timed that any better. So. The Council of Nations has met on the dawn of the new campaigning season. At this meeting, the nations may offer you their allegiance or declare war on you. Pick your allies and enemies carefully, as wars declared here will last until the next campaign season starts in two hours. Options involving multiple opponents will increase the time until the next meeting. So, uh, we f finally get to see some uh, lovely uh, faction art uh, of all the factions. So we've got uh, Johnny Depp over here, we've got Pocahontas, we've got a Star Wars character, we've got another Star Wars character. Uh, we have Abdul, who's actually an Asian girl. Yes, that's what's inside Rambot. Uh, we have Solomon the Magnificent. Uh, we have... I guess that's a Star Trek character. And uh, we have... what do you call it? We have System Shock 2. And we have Command and Conquer. So these are all the factions. And we've got a list of randomly generated um, options down here, which is not very easy to see, and I apologize for that. Um, but yeah, you get to... You get to pick which, uh, factions you pick a fight with. And, uh, you, it either costs or rewards you with commodities. And so, yeah, this is randomly generated, and, um, the most commodities right now is basically joining the Grey Talons in a war against the Deepwater Guard, Whiteflies, and Lightning Hoods. And, uh, yeah, that's uh, not a bit good option for us, because I have literally just two boats. So, I'm just gonna lead a war against the Deepwater Guard, and then that confirms everything. And so, all this, this is the changes that'll happen. So, uh, war with Deepwater Guard, Steel Strider is neutral, neutral, Scarlet Dawn, they're at war with the Great Talons, Swin Guard is neutral, neutral, Deepwater Guard, war with Player, Great Talons, war with Scarlet Dawn. So... Now you'll see this right here has appeared on the map. So, now it's two hours until the next council meeting. So this is probably one of the bigger changes. It just spices up the campaign just a little bit and means that um, you have to consider uh, who you want to pick a fight with because you might get unlucky. Uh, people might just decide to gang up on you. And I'm going to pull you out of play just briefly and we can talk about some of the other neat features. So. Uh, there's multiple new blocks, um, in particular, sorry mate, I'm gonna pull you into play again and turn you off, just to demonstrate some things. I really should not have picked up Black Ship to play this with, because it's hard to see. So, work in progress over in the land section. Uh, people have complained that uh, the sticky foot is a little bit limiting, so we have a clamby foot, which works slightly different. So the sticky foot... Uh, basically sticks to terrain, provides friction, but this actually clamps onto terrain, so it works a little bit different. So a maximum of one clampy foot can be clamped at a given time for a given vehicle, and allows control of roll pitch and your when clamped. So if I put this here, and if I hit Q on it, uh, you can see the clamping state, clamp height, etc, etc, forward clamp, backward clamp, left clamp, right clamp, etc. Uh, I have not played around with this because uh, in the patch notes it says it is very much a work in progress so I'm going to wait until they iron out whatever issues might be with it. So moving right along, there are also features to decoration which is very very handy. So if we place a, let's place a block of a different color, 
right here, hit Control X, you'll see the UI is a little bit different, and you can hit Mass Paint uh, on all your deco. So, if we go here, actually, let's decorate here, add new decoration, and up positioning there, and copy all, go over here, paste all, and if we go back over here, uh, we can hit Mass Paint. And that didn't work. Oh no, that works for all decorations there, sorry. I got too excited, I haven't played with those. There we go. Changes the UI here, very handy, very handy, and you can just pick, which makes uh, picking the colors a lot uh, easier. Lovely, lovely. And, uh, joy to behold, so I'm gonna delete all of that there, I'm gonna delete all of that here, I'm gonna have this, whoops, no, we're gonna have this. So, uh, one of the problems with uh, Deco is, can you get out of the water please, is that um, sometimes you would like to hide the original object, and that is now an option uh, that you can do. So down here, we've got our uh, porthole thing, and say we want that uh, to be there, uh, but we don't want the block it's attached to to be there. So you can just go hide original mesh. And this has a number of wonderful applications, and the immediate one I thought of is it means that you can make um, a vehicle out of one material when actually it's another. So I can go here and go, say, wood beam 4 metered, and just go pitch there. And admittedly, that already hides the metal beam quite nicely, but that's not quite good enough. So hide original mesh. I now have a metal beam that looks like wood. And this just is going to free up a lot of, um, a lot of options uh, for people who want to really dig into the decoration mechanic. It's really good. So, uh, that's that, and we'll delete that. And uh, there's another incredibly handy feature, and that is something that I absolutely adore since I like to... Uh, build things out of wood. I like to prototype craft out of wood and then later uh, once the concept is proven I like to make them out of um, metal or alloy and heavy armor and stuff like that and That does necessitate building the whole thing all over again, but we finally have a Structural block swapper integrated into the game itself. Uh, some of you watching might remember uh, There used to be something like that just uh, independent just checking that the deep water guards not coming to murder me um there used to be like a website for that, run by none other than uh, Sean the community John, sorry, the community manager. But unfortunately, that's out of date. So now we've got an integrated version. So we just go over here, ignore the count blocks, that thing that's a mod, armor refit. So say uh, we've got our friend here. We've got the wood cider. Uh, it's made of wood, and um, that's a problem. Why is there two options here? That's weird. That's weird. But it's okay. Ah, now we're looking at the right thing. So, it's made out of wood, and you can only really get away with pure woodcraft uh, for so long uh, in the campaign. And so, uh, maybe I want to change that to something else. Now, if I change it to metal, it'll sink, but uh, changing it to alloy, for instance, uh, might, be, might be just an easy way to get this thing, uh, you know, just to, to extend its operational lifespan a little bit longer. So, I'm gonna do that. Click, and with just a single click, I have now uh, transformed this thing uh, into a much more sturdy craft, because alloy is a fair bit stronger than wood, it's much more lightweight, it's much more buoyant, and well, we've got some stone down here, and then we're just keeping in mind with the durability thing, maybe I want to refit that, so let's go stone to metal, refit, ta-da, and I probably... I probably messed up the AI compartment because that's probably stone. I definitely have. And uh, let's see here. Yes. Oh wow, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, the graphical overhauls, uh, as mentioned in the last update video I did. Yeah, I'm gonna have to fix that, but that's okay. So yeah, like this V menu thing is the absolute best. I love it so much. And we're gonna go uh, celebrate uh, by uh, picking a fight with the Deep Water Guard because we can do that. So, while we're just watching Rambo... Actually... Uh, how about you get up to maximum speed? I'm getting distracted. But it's okay. 
You have no materials. That's bad. Moving out. Okay, so now, while I'm resupplying my fleet, I can uh, talk a bit more about what's else. I'm going to read out the patch notes as per tradition. So, additions. AI. Add maximum hull center of mass shift before switching side parameter to broadside 2.0 behavior. Useful for spreading damage evenly on both sides of the hull. And, same uh, behavior change, uh, add minimum uh, firepower fraction before switching side parameter for broadside 2.0 behavior. Useful for vehicles that depend heavily on side weapons. So it's basically making the broadside 2.0 a little bit smarter. It means that, say, if it takes a lot of damage on one side, or it loses its weapons on one side, it'll switch to the other side. I never use Broadside 2.0 because Broadside 1.0 is kind of more idiot-proof. And, okay, next thing is Armor Refit, which we've covered. New tab on the V menu, Armor Refit. Changes all armor blocks from a specific material and color, or any color, to another material and color, or keeps the color. I'm going to mention again, simply because I can while I'm here, is that I love this new feature. I That is going to make the, the game so much more time efficient for me, because I can just swap materials around. It's fantastic. And, and it means that you can color code uh, which parts of your craft you want to change the material of. I haven't tested that, but it's a distinct possibility. Okay, blocks. Added 2 meter, 3 meter, and 4 meter surge protective beams. These have adjusted values for the EMP test mentioned elsewhere in the notes. Yeah, they're changing EMP a little bit, just so you know. So, I'm going to spawn this thing in again. And so, just so you know, can you stop, please? Right, so over here, uh, surge protectors. Uh, you've got one, two, three and four meter variants of this. Uh, these kind of look like placeholder uh, meshes for now, but it's all right, but it's all right, it's all good. So, uh, that's absolutely groovy and I love it. Um, so yeah, it means that uh, less block count uh, for surge protectors, which is nice. Alrighty, who then, let's, uh, you are gonna flop around like a crazy person, so we don't necessarily want that. This is actually a weirdly far... Anyone notice the face on here? Watch my live streams, it's great fun. We were conquer we were conquering Nita with wooden boats, just earlier today, in fact. Anyway, what are we what else are we talking about? Breadboard. Breadboard modules for reading slash writing custom axes added. Great, I don't know what that means. Campaign! Added a mini-map to the diplomacy screen so you get an idea of where the different factions are before choosing your walls. Fleets are now teleported to the nearest non-hostile territory if the faction they are located in become hostile to the fleet's owner after a diplomacy council meeting. Markers on the campaign map to show who you are at war or allied with and where they are based. Uh, players fleets now trigger a secret emergency meeting when they stay near allied or neutral resource zones or inside non-border tiles of neutral factions for more than 120 seconds. In a secret emergency meeting, the offended nation and all their allies declare war against the player's faction. Wow. Yep. Cool. Okay. Clamp foot. Uh, added a clampy foot, which is an advanced form of sticky foot. We covered that briefly. Uh, control. Oh my goodness. Uh, add bindings profile, which allows changing input bindings on the fly to accommodate different situations with a limited number of available bindings. For example, you might may want to have a profile for third-person camera where the controller left stick is used for camera movement, and another profile for aircraft where the left stick is used for pitch and roll. Okay, so this is for people who use controllers, the weirdos. How are we doing? We're doing good. Uh, da, da, da. Changing key binding system to support analog bindings, multiple bindings per action, and arbitrary key, com key combinations, and support for controller input. Okay, okay. So it basically allows you to play from the depths with the controller. Which is a little weird, but you know what? If you like playing with a controller, I shan't judge. We all like our fun. Decorations. Display the name of the current mesh and mimic and decoration UI. Two thumbs up, I love that. Option to hide the mesh of the block that dec decoration is tethered to. Again, two thumbs up. Laser warners. Apply to all button in the laser warner UI. Don't mind if I do. I will have a look at that right now. Uh, that was on a turret. No, it wasn't. So, defense. Laser warner, which looks very different. 
So, apply to all, which is actually really handy. I never realized I wanted that, but I do. Uh, Lua added version global constant to get the Lua language version. Lua commands for reading, writing, custom axes added. Again, I don't know what that means, but it sounds good. Please don't run into land, little guy. Uh, power priority. Power creators and users are now grouped by name. Each group is classed by default to avoid performance issues. All right, let's see that. So, okay, power users, power creators. Show each of two spin block. Okay, you're all good. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah, I did notice that, yeah, this uh, does use quite a lot of... Uh, this is very laggy uh, sometimes if there's a lot of power users and creators on the craft. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Where, where was I? Oh, a separator. Added an option to the separator block to not separate unless the blocks it is separating are all repaired. Intended for use uh, with ACBs. Add an option to the separator too instead of separating any block attached to it. Only separate attached blocks that are in front of the separator block. In this mode, the separated vehicles are to be connected to the main vehicle in other places. Uh, let's just check that. Sub object with the separator. And Q. Everything. Extra. Wait a minute. Do not separate it. Main. Permanent. Wait on repairs. Do do do. Yeah, okay. Right, I'm just gonna assume you're telling the truth. Yay, well done, you missed the land. Okay, there we go. We are home free. We can stop driving around like a crazy person now. Okay, Steam. Valve's got a new option to disable pressure control. Makes the valve ignore breaches and pressure ranges, so one off open close commands from ACB stick. If you knew steam engines better than me, which isn't hard, let's just test that. Where are you? So I'm just gonna put that there. Steam valve. So we go here and where is it? It was steam valve, not friggin' where is it? So we go here. Close when a breach is detected. Do, 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 do. Yep, so it can ignore that. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, UI. New changes in V menu, remove decorations, and remove subcontracts. Well, let's try that right now, because we've got nothing to lose. Uh, where is it? So you can remove decorations, yay that worked, remove subcontracts, uh, is gonna make this thing's turrets fall off. Uh, or not. Nope, it did. What sub? Oh, no, it made the azopods fall off. <laughs> Alright. Retrofit selected force, let's retrofit you back to the regular woodsider. Because, whoops, no, that's not there. I'm getting distracted, but I will not apologize. Ta-da! Hey, you're back to normal, look at you. Alrighty, and now there's a... Ch okay, there's changes now, there's changes. ACB is now possible to detect an object up to 5,000... Yep, 5,000 meters in front of the ACB. Uh, let's stop rocking around, because otherwise people are going to get sick, and that's bad. Campaign! AI got- what the- this is changes, so wait, no, this is additions. So, now changes. Changes, changes. Okay, campaign. All controlled factions- AI controlled factions that are allied will now work together to catch aboard sections from their enemies. AI won't try to capture board sections that are far away, uh, that are far away as often. Changed AI intercepting of enemy fleets who have much better grouping and better logic in general. Changed how the AI goes about capturing board sections. It should now group better and not send weak individual vehicles to the player very often, which is good because that's too easy. Uh, changed movement of AI fleets to be more smooth when following other fleets. It is now, yeah, excuse me. It is now possible to capture board sections that don't border your own board sections. 
but that do border a board section of an ally. After capturing the board section, it is given to that ally, so you can basically help your allies do stuff. Uh, limited how much forces the AI will stack to attack a single board section. Okay, cool, so it means I can't stack energy. Uh, custom jet engines, custom jet generator, uh, power thrust up from 0 0.05 to 0 0.055. Power to thrust. So they have more power, I guess? Uh, decorations. Choose the color from a list of previews instead of using a slider. Improve the mesh search function to be much faster. Cool. Ducts. Drag for a 1x1, 3x3, 5x5, and 7x7 ducts up from a 0 0.05 4 meter wedge equivalent to 0 0.4 1 meter slope equivalent. They still don't need clearing, so that's nice. Uh, EMP. As a test, and also this is slightly outdated because there was another mini patch um, uploaded not long ago. Uh, as a test, EMP has been adjusted by adjusting all materials and their values. The main change being heavy armor no longer acts as a giant EMP sink and some materials don't outright block EMP anymore. Feedback for this should be via the beta test feedback channel in Discord. That's the main From the Depths Discord channel, in case anyone's wondering. This is just a test and can be reverted, so this is something they're test driving. Fuel engines. Uh, base power to material up from 500 to 520. Okay, so fuel engines have been made slightly more efficient. Models for fuel parts have been changed, purely a visual change. This fixes issues with the old models and textures. Alright, right, let's, let's have a look at that. Uh, where's a... Uh... Aha! Fascinating. Oh, that looks smexy. Oh, hello, hello. I like this. Oh, I like this. I quite like this. It looks Metallica now. It looks like Metallica. Good band. Yeah, yeah it looks actual metal now. Interesting. So that's new cylinder. It's not a red thing. Yeah, cool. I dig it. I dig it. Okay, exhaust pipes. Yeah, they look like actual metal now. Oh, wow. Hull pipes look funky. I'm not sure about the hull pipe, to be perfectly honest with you. It's a little bit harder to tell. Okay, it's not hard at all to tell where the holes are. Silvery, shiny. We got chrome, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Uh, loading. Faster loading of details in the Blueprint browser. Groovy. So if I can just load the... Oh, wait. How did you mention I did notice that was a little bit faster. Missile. Connectors and IIF blocks and injectors now use the missile controller's Q menu. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So UI update. Uh, ejector add-ons and lure transceivers now use the missile launcher's Q menu. Okay, cool. Missile harpoon and sticky flare attachment is more reliable? Okay. Um, that's a little vague. Missile winch max power up from 5,000 to 24,000. So they can really winch hard now. Uh, allow se selecting nose component of missiles with length of 1 or 2. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. That's a significant change. That is a significant change. Or is it? Okay, so... Could we not do this before? I don't remember, I never tried. So we can go active radar seeker. I mean, why would you bother? Like, that really doesn't make much difference. I mean, you could make a very tiny, like, little kinetic bomb. So, impact damage per meter per second. Okay, yeah. Hmm. Interesting. If I put a thumper head on that, what does that do? Thumper head. Magnet? Yeah, I don't know. That that kind of confuses me. Alright. Okay, but yeah, the winch is more strong. The harpoon and sticky flare. Attachment is more reliable. Okay, cool. Alright, separators. Remove the... Have we captured this tile yet? Not quite. Uh, we do need to blow something up in this video, that's compulsory. Okay, 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 Separator, remove the two second delay uh, before a newly placed weapon can fire if the weapon is placed by a, a separator block. Separators have a 0.1 second cooldown between separating and attaching. Uh, the separate ACB action has a one second cooldown. 
Not sure what this means. I have, I got to admit, I have not played much with separator blocks. I just haven't gotten around to it. Move the two second delay before any of this weapon. Okay. Well, it just means that weapons can fire without delay uh, once the separator block works. Steam. Steam crank motor default RPM up to two. Okay. Uh, Steam stat page tracks steam jet thrust and material use. Okay, cool, cool. Visuals. Increase maximum low LOD uh, distance from one kilometer to five uh, kilometer. Okay, so you can load things in from a greater distance. And then there is a whole bunch of uh, fixes, which I'm not going to go over because, but I don't know, I just, I just never do that. So, uh, on that merry note, um, I guess we'll go just go blow up a deep water guard. Uh, a thing, just, um, and I'll give, I don't know, some thoughts, uh, on the campaign. Or not on the campaign, sorry, on this patch. I love this. I love this patch a lot, so... Yeah, just uh, the, um, the block armor, uh, retrofitting tool alone is truly fantastic. Like, I'm really happy about that. That's gonna save us so all so much time just in uh, retrofitting designs. Yeah, it's gonna be really good. Hope we actually get to. Oh yeah, this is the other canoe. It is a bunch of mini guns on a tiny wooden hull. It is delightfully adorable and useless. Uh, this guy is the one which actually brought firepower to this party. So, uh, what else? What else? New campaign, much more interesting, much more. Dynamic, you might be able to actually win. Didn't say in the patch notes whether you can actually just win the game uh, with an ally's help now. Um, but, um, yeah. Well, what else is uh, worth uh, dwelling on? Like, keep an eye on this space for the for the clampy foot. That's good. Uh, decorations made a lot easier. Little changes to missiles. You need to go open fire at some point, because honestly, honestly, wait a minute. Uh-oh. We're almost out of materials. Okay, we fired one cram shot. That's good enough. That's good enough. It's H-E-E-M-P, by the way. Let's hope it actually hits something. It missed. What was I expecting? Well, this campaign's not uh, gonna go very well for me. Yep, I just uh, completely ran... Uh, out of materials for that, so I'm gonna go sit on you, and hopefully we're not gonna get drunk, but that's okay. Not drunk, I mean move around like we're drunk. Oh well, let the soothing sounds of miniguns uh, soothe you to sleep. So yeah, that is, uh, that is, distract them while I get to the number, okay, uh, beta test 3.3.1. Lots of fun stuff, like, if like, if you fell asleep during this video, like, campaign diplomacy, uh, retrofit function, clampy foot, and new deco features. So, that's all very super and good, and I am can't wait for this to get into the, uh, what do you call it? To get into the stable branch. That would be super cool. So, thank you devs for continuing to update this amazing game, and thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. I'm gonna be sick. Well, wish granted. Well, there goes my canoe. Anyway, where was I? Oh yeah, thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Support me on Patreon or YouTube membership if you like. It really helps and there's fun perks in it for you. Thank you to all my current supporters and I will see you next time in From the Depths. Hopefully where I do a better job, you know, managing my canoes. Farewell.